because in a way, you know, so how that's uh, how my my father pointed it. You know, in a sense, we're like his. Um, I've, you know, in certainly Nigerian culture, well, I'm almost his inheritance in a sense. You know, they like to show you off. You know, it's like ah, oh, this is my this is my son Mark. He's studying law. It's like oh, la, la, la. and then you have these uncles and people on Facebook saying stuff like oh, why are you study law? If any legal advice will come to you, it's like ah, you can't afford me. Yeah. <laughs> and there is stuff like that. Good morning. Good afternoon, my name is Mark Savage and today we'll be joining me with Bernice and Chill and this basically is the, the first time that we do this and it's kind of like an informal setting and I'm joined with the two friends of mine, my two guests, with uh, David Mustafa from Albania I'm joined with Max Mo from Slovenia. Um, yeah, first of all, you know, I'll just let you guys want to introduce yourself so uh, yeah, Dave, you can start, like who are you? Yes, thank you Mark. Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is David Mustafa, I'm an international European law student and I'm also the editor-in-chief of The Hague International, which is a legal journal and a publishing platform established in The Hague. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today with you, Mark, and I'm actually quite excited to discuss the topic of success. I'm really curious how this, uh, this conversation uh, will go. All right, so Max. Yeah, um, I'm also a student of law, um, international and European law with both of you. Uh, and because I'm very bored in life, I also study psychology <laughs> as a second study. And um, right now, I'm just curious in how this conversation will develop. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Exactly. Yeah, because um, I was actually talking to uh, Dave, um, I think a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we stumbled upon the, to the topic, like, what is a successful life? Like, uh, what is success, right? And I think that's uh, quite an interesting thing, because even though we, as uh, in everyday lives, um, we, which we're doing, we're doing our our thing where we're studying we're trying to achieve be happy and all that stuff but like what does it actually mean and i think that's some, something we kind of forget a lot of times i don't want to sound too cheesy but sometimes you know we, we maybe not focus on the the correct things so yeah i just want to start with like a simple definition at school with like okay what does the i guess oxford the uh, um dictionary say like what is success right and i had two things of course so success it's accomplishing a desired aim or result and they use an example an successful a successful attack on the town or having achieved fame, wealth, or social status, and a successful actor. Would you say that you agree with that definition? I would pretty much so agree. And I, in fact, I like the fact that you included both statements because uh, they sort of complement each other, right? Because most people think that, okay, achieving a goal is very fulfilling. But at the same time, if no one is around to see that you're achieving this goal, well, suddenly it's not that fulfilling anymore. And I think this is this is taught us. It is taught to us at an early age. Like for example, if you if you study hard for a, a subject and you get a good grade, suddenly uh, you're the whiz kid because you passed a very difficult exam. However, if you were well, if every other student in the class were to take the same grade, so they all took a ten, suddenly you're not the whiz kid anymore. So I think success, well, in order to be successful, you have to stand out in a way from the crowd. That's one of the characteristics of success. Okay. At least. Yeah. Uh, with standing out away from the crowd, that's, that's an interesting thing. But um, I'll, I'll come back to that. But the two definitions are, I think, are really good because one sort of offers an objective perspective and the other is subjective one, right? So um, with the, the, an army has successfully, successfully taken over the town, that's quite an objective definition because um, you can measure it. Um, the problem with the other definition is that it's unmeasurable if you achieve success in your life, in your work. You know, that's something that depends on person per person. Um, and <clears throat> what I want to say is that once um, the topic wasn't really directly about success, but more about progress, but the words are there, there, right? Um, so, for example, I was walking home and having a deep discussion about what progress is and what, what, how can you say that one society is more um, progressive than the other. Um, and for example, if you uh, take an object, a wheel of a car, for example, and a smart man, not me, <laughs> <a> <laughs> could um, <laughs> literally um, write down an equation that will prove that this is the best way to travel on a flat surface, right? Um, and it's something that's measurable, that you, you have a defined start and finish, and you can measure if that's progress and success. So you're making a wheel more and more round, it will be a progress towards a better travel on a flat surface. But when it comes to 
personal definitions of are you are you making progress in your work life in your personal life are you being successful in those i think it's very subjective and it really depends on person per person and i'm more inclined with the second definition in that case yeah, yeah that makes sense and i guess i want to kind of like uh, tag on to what you mentioned before so is success only like um a thing if you have recognition for it because in the, how you're explaining it you can only measure success if someone else is bad in, in that sense right is that what it means and would you be successful if no one gave you props for it and no one said like, hey, you're doing a good job, will that still be defined as success in your opinion? Well, the thing is that, of course, I, I would like to separate it into, let's say, external success and internal success. Like external success is what I just said, can be uh, summarized in a, sim a simple concept, concept, which is called acknowledgement or admiration from other people. That is a very important thing, right? But at the same time, you cannot be successful if you don't feel successful within yourself, right? So you need, you need both these comp components to feel successful. And that's a mistake that many people do, right? So they go after admiration, admiration, admiration. They see, okay, I need to do this in order to get uh, approval from these people. And then they get the approval from, this, from those people. And in the end, they realize that, okay, uh, actually, I don't feel that good, uh, this, that good about this. So I think, yes, it is an important. It, Really, it is a precondition to become successful, like getting admired by other people. But at the same time, you also need to uh, feel good about yourself. So, yeah. That makes sense. Because you hear it so many times, even in the most famous things, like, oh, money isn't everything, you know? Yeah. Like these big multi-million dollar people or really successful people, they always kind of say like, oh, yeah, guys, you know, you can have all the money in the world, but you're not really, you're not really successful or happy in that sense. So would you say that happiness is maybe more important than success? Uh, I'll just, just jump in because you mentioned money and I, I'll just say that that is a great example of a measurable success because mm. you, you can very clearly define that someone is successful. No, if they deem that making money is successful, you can very clearly see who is successful and who is not. You just look at the number, right? It's it's countable. Um, but what did you say? If I would say that, is that that makes me happy? No, because you he was talking about external and internal. Yeah. So maybe more like the internal part. You know, maybe so not the measurable part. You said money or how much you have in your ba bank account. But for example, when I was asking a lot of people, you know, what is, does success mean for them? Everyone, everyone said, "Oh, happiness. I want to have a happy life," which is fine. I'm, I'm pretty sure they believe it. But to me, it just seems like quite a, oh, sorry, like quite a, you know, a simple answer. Like, what, what would, what, you, what did you think about? Of course, a happy life. That's the thing that everybody would choose, I think. But um, the problem with having a happy life is that you can't have one. <laughs> <laughs> Could you please elaborate? Because that sounds very. Yeah. <laughs> what can. do you mean you can't have an happy life? Happiness is a side product. Happiness is not an end result. Um, so, for example. When you have a lot of exams due, you mm -hmm. have a lot of deliverables due, and you put a lot of effort into studying, into making those assignments, and then you you feel like once you're going to submit that and get a good break back, you're going to be happy. And sure, maybe you are, but like what for half a second? It's you a know? fleeting feeling. It's, it's like a, a short thing. It's like, a bump in your dopamine. Exactly. It's like it. like a cookie. You know, yes. you feel good, and then afterwards you feel terrible. You need another cookie. You need another cookie. Exactly, and that's my problem in like why I think. That sounds very um, dark, but why I think I'll never be happy is because nobody can really ever be happy because you need mm -hmm. to constantly work in and have goals to have happiness. So what, what, what gives me happiness is not achieving a goal, but working towards a goal. Seeing that you're closer to finishing the assignment, you get a lot of yeah. happiness, right? In one more hour, come on, boys, let's do it. And you start smiling, you know? So I, 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 I would say that happiness um, is a side product. It's not an end result of... True, but then I guess I kind of want to counter it because you say, oh, in that sense, you only feel happy for a short moment. But what, what if you, let's say, train your mind to try to like maintain and be consistent with that happy feeling? You know what I mean? I say the word, I say, if my friends me, I say life is good a lot of time. And people think I just say it to be funny, but I say it because in a sense, it's a power in the world, in, in power in those words, right? Like every day, if you're kind of conscious or aware of what, of like that life is good and things that you're grateful for, every day you, you wake up with a happy feeling. So in that sense, hopefully it won't be a fleeting moment, but it'll be hopefully a moment that I can expand for a lifetime. It, it is a good exercise and I would pretty much uh, encourage it to everyone. I mean, if, it's, if, if, you, if you can do it, then it's great. But I, I think I would agree with Max on the point that you cannot just be happy, choose to be happy. Of course, you, can, you have to work hard. Look, you can say your, to yourself like uh, positive stuff and positive messages, but you have to work for it. 
Whereas with being sad, you, you don't really have to try hard to be sad, you know, like you can you can just be sad by looking at something like looking at the street or you go out uh, for a bike and then you see it's so windy and they're like, oh, this this could have gone better. So I, I think, yes, of course, like it is possible to strive towards happiness, but it's not it's not an easy road for sure. So, so you, you think it's, it's easier to be sad than it's to be happy in that sense? Well, I, I don't think so. I think that's that's how reality is. I think reality in some way. I, I hope I'm not getting too dark. No, over here no, cause, no. Cause, say what you want to say, man. Yeah. You're the press. It's okay. No, so, it's no. <laughs> no, it's just if if you look at things, it's more likely for things to go wrong than right, most of the time. I mean, for let's say, well, well, I think I'm really getting really dark over here. So maybe maybe we can. No, no, that's no, that's but, fine. Uh, yeah. yeah, I just, of course. If you really, really, really focus on the positive thoughts, that will have that will have a positive impact in your life. I really do believe that. So, I, I would I would in a way agree with you, um, because it does feel like, from a subjective perspective, everything that made you happy in life you had to work for, and all the sad parts were just given to you. You know, <laughs> doesn't it? Like it does. Be, I, I do understand his point. Um, but um, an interesting thing that you said that you're very well known for saying yes, life is good. I, I I heard you say that many times. But have you ever heard of the facial feedback hypothesis? No. Um, so it's a hypothesis uh, that's um, was proposed in the previous century, um, and it essentially states that. Um, if you smile, you will be happy. So um, you, it's not just because you're happy you smile, but also if you force your facial muscles to do the smiling act, your brain will perceive as you being happy, so you'll become happy. And my question is, do you think that that's maybe also a coping mechanism that you're using? And that you're saying life is good in order to make your life good, not because it is good. In a sense, yeah, I guess, I don't want to... I don't, <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, I'm just really sad and I'm saying this to convince myself, to make myself happy. I think, yeah, that, that, that could be a way that could be that, how you could see it. But I think it's so something that I don't really enjoy in general is when you complain about a lot of things. I don't like when people complain. And, and honestly, if you logically analyze your situation and maybe not even compare, but just see what you have. I think, in, in, in my opinion, I have more to be happy, oh, sorry, I have more to be like happy about than to be sad about. Like if I think about my family, my family, something that I did not earn, I just got, you've met my mother, she's great. And she makes me very happy, right? And there's so many people in my life that I don't really feel like I had to work for or had to work hard for to achieve. They just, I, I, I've been lucky enough, been blessed enough to have those in my life and they've, they've helped with my happiness. But when it comes to like success, do you think that um, a really important aspect of it is then just perception, right? In that sense, you, you can maybe say ignorance is played this place you're just trying to convince yourself but would would let's say would be perception or like how you think about those positive things or in your life is more important than is is, is a poor like driving factor in being successful yeah. I would, yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, I would i would certainly agree to that i think success it's 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 way beyond our control like the perception of success i think we have close to zero control over it because like take take a look at history what 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 was considered successful back in the days and what is considered successful now well let's say back in the days in the early ages like medieval times if you were to initiate a war which would end up in thousands of people thousands of people getting uh, annihilated or like mass destructions you would be called a hero right and you would be made emperor however if you were to do that nowadays <laughs> the result wouldn't be the same so who determines what is success, right? Like this external success. It's such, I think it's, it's it, it would be a waste of time to sit down and actually determine what external success is because people have so many standards and they, they just come up with new things every day. Like one day you can be successful by, I don't know, building up this type of car. And the other day you can be successful by saying that, oh, that type of car is so, uh, it's so bad for the environment. So let's get rid of that car. You know, it's, it's I think, yeah, it's, it's a hard task. It's a hard task. Yes, it's very subjective in that sense and to like this mm -hmm. to determine what success is as well. Yeah, to add to his ex um, part about external success and how hard it is to measure, um, there is a very famous chemist whose name I forgot right now, but um, essentially uh, this one chemist received two Nobel Prizes in his life. 
And um, the first one he received because um, he invented freons. So, you know, the um, molecule that was put in all the hairsprays and refrigerators and everything that destroyed essentially our ozone layer. Oh, um, that was later on. Nobel Peace Prize, yes. No, Nobel Prize for chemistry, yes. Okay. For, because he was successful in his field, right? Mm -hmm. And he also later on, um, a lot of less um, car engines broke down because he added lead to <laughs> fuel. Oh. <laughs> and it ended up in thousands of cancers and tumors developed in children in the United oh. States, you know. Um, and he was also awarded a Nobel Prize for that. So I bet everybody at that moment he thought that he was an unbelievably successful person. But right now, history is trying to forget him. He's being eliminated from the books and everything because we don't deem him successful anymore because we speak about more destruction. So a lot of it in terms of externalities, I think, has to do with time. How much time passes that you get to know all the information that certain actions cost um, um, or um, portrayed in the real world, you know. Okay, so I guess to, to truly maybe establish what is successful, it's, it's hard to, to boil it down in that moment. You have to look at it maybe in a, in a longer time span in that sense. Definitely, yeah. The longer the time span, the better the measurement, I guess. And it's also based on like maybe consensus. Like success is very, I guess, a fluid thing. It's, it's based on what we think in this current time. As you said, like, you know, 400 years ago, if I raped and pillaged the town, I would have been very successful. Yeah. If I do that now, war crimes, ICC, you know? Yeah. It's not really, it's not a great thing. But something else I also want to discuss, I just kind of like... Searched, okay, Google, what do you think is uh, the definition of a successful, successful person? Uh, a successful person, right? And it was like a couple sentences, and it said, Success is the ability to achieve personal, professional, and life goals. This is done through proper planning, hard work, and will. A successful person is the person who is capable of making a crit critical, bold decisions to reach his desired goals, in that sense. So, in, 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 in I guess, almost how I see it is that, Success is, in a very cheesy way, whatever what you make it, right? You have a certain goal that you have for it. You, you, you work hard and you achieve it. But you, you mentioned before that you felt like it's almost out of our control. Do you fully believe that, that success is just up to you? Some people are just lucky and some people aren't? I would, I would pretty much agree to that. I mean, of course, hard work is a precondition to success, but it's not an absolute precondition. Uh, I'm sure that we all like when we talk about success it's it's they all like I think about these cliche uh, phrases like it's not about what you know it's about who you know and all, all these phrases that were, like we try to laugh at them but actually are really really true like it's not just about how hard you work or how much time you put into something it's also about the relations that you have with people and your positioning in time Right. It's 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 for example, I, uh, I would never be able to, let's say, uh, study law if I wasn't born in a time where, you know, education was this advanced. So I think I think there are many factors to it. But of course, hard work is, is I would say it's it's really. Yeah, it's really a precondition to that. I guess because, yeah, because something I've noticed more and more, I guess the older I've got. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, it's flu season, guys. <laughs> I'm coughing hard. One more thing. <coughs> So basically, something that I've noticed before is that, yeah, in a sense, it is who you know. It, is, it seems more and more I realize that life is just like LinkedIn, you know, in a sense. It's just kind of like the connections that you know and that push you in a successful position, right? Let's, yeah, we both like study law and we're looking for an internship. If you know a friend that works in like a big institution, it's easy. You, you put yourself in a more successful, more advantageous position, right? And I think in, in certain sense, that is still under our control, right? You, you, we can still be nice with these people. We can still make sure that we're... We're, we're being kind, we can, we can still make sure that we control that aspect of our lives. And hopefully, in, if we're lucky enough, because, you know, tomorrow isn't promised to anyone, I don't want to be dark, we could drop dead right now in that sense. But if we, something that we can control is maybe the people and that we come in contact with and how they can potentially help us or benefit our roles or, roles or decide goals, right? Because do you think that's the most important thing? Yeah, certainly, we study, the guys, you, you study law, we both study law, you study psychology. Do you think it's what, what's more important to be successful, like the, the people that you know or like what you know, like up here, your knowledge or your, your, your abilities? Uh, I don't know. I'm at the start of my career, so I really can't say. Um, I, I don't think there is enough data available to make any sort of conclusions here. Um, but uh, I think uh, the connection between success and other people is like twofold. So firstly, other people help you get success. 
um, definitely, as you said. And secondly, other people help you realize success, as you said, right? So you need them for both. You need them to achieve success and you need them to realize that you have achieved success because rarely will you celebrate something by yourself, right? Um, it's usually it's a social thing. You try to invite other people so they celebrate with you. Um, so I would definitely put a value of other people in your life high. Yeah, exactly. So we need, once again, you need that recognition, you need that confirmation from someone else. But do, would you say you can't be successful without having any recognition? So you can't, you can't just sit in a room by yourself and be like, wow, I'm doing well, or that's successful for me. I bet there are a lot of Buddhist monks who do that. I'm being very stereotypical here, but I think that they deem themselves successful when they reach what is called Nirvana, or, and they do that by themselves, right? Um, so it, success can be in every aspect. It's so subjective. Mm. Exactly. It's true, but like, of course, like, if if we talk about achievements, then I I, I, I would say that uh, external uh, validation, it's 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 yeah, it has to be there. Like, okay. if you if you manage to let's say win a case, like you need other people to recognize that you won a case. You need the judge to bang the 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 hammer, and like you, you need that absolutely. But. I, to build up on, on upon this, uh, this because we all like throwing hypotheses here. Like we don't really know because we haven't reached success at this point. No. We're twenty two years old, and I'm, I'm sure we're pretty much anxious at some point about this. But I would say that uh, other people definitely help you get success. I mean, if you have, if your father or if your uh, somebody, your friend is uh, well positioned in society and he managed to get you in, yet of course that is that is something that that is helpful. But to maintain that success, which is completely another topic, you need your own skill and your own hard work. So I, I, I think that's, that, that separation like, needs to be clear for people because I, I know a lot of people who have connections and say, oh, don't worry about it. I know this guy who knows this guy. He will get me this, in this position. Well, yeah, sure, you, you, you could get that position. But how able are you to maintain that position? Have you actually worked hard? Like, do you, do you have a... Is this, like allocation based on merit like you know so there, there's always these questions that pop up about you know personal development and everything okay exactly okay that makes sense i kind of when i want to draw attention that i was just just googling doing some research and there's this is guy called john c maxwell he's like a public speaker he's like a, a numerous amount of books like he does conventions and stuff like that and he actually had them um, free i guess his roadmap to success in like three points and point number one is said yeah knowing your purpose you have to start you have to to choose to decide where you're going and what the journey you are taking in that sense. And then step number two, he said, are growing your maximum potential. In order to grow, you have to make a choice. Not everyone's comfortable with their growth and you have to make a choice that you want to grow in that aspect. And then finally, you have to sow seeds that benefit others. As, a, as someone who is actively growing their business, you have to need to constantly consider the benefit of others, right? And it's something we didn't touch upon. So I'm just going to ask you, it's going to be a pretty deep question. Do you guys feel like you know what your, your purpose is or is that something you guys are? And that's always in the back of your mind. And it's a big question. It's, 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 it's a very broad question. like Because you, you obviously both chose law and like psychology. So in a sense, you maybe want to do something with that. Do you have a sense that you know what like your purpose is? Or have you made have you made a choice? Like, okay, this is kind of what I want to do with my life or this is what I want to put out into the world uh, no <laughs> <laughs> fair and that's and fine I'm sure <laughs> not, no uh, that's also why I study because right now I'm very useless so um, no, you're <laughs> for not society useless. for society yes and what I'm trying to do is just gain as much knowledge as possible and hope that one day I will figure out what my purpose is ahead and hopefully contribute then more to the society than society contributed to me. That's inter That's interesting. So, but you're focusing like you don't know what you want to do in society. Would you say that's your 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 purpose? Trying to find out how to help society. That's the end goal to be useful for society. Yeah, I think uh, a person who doesn't have a purpose should have a purpose to find a purpose. Okay. <laughs> yes. So that's me right now. <laughs> so <laughs> that makes sense. So yeah. So every 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 person on this earth should find out. How they should help this. Yes, I, I don't think that if we're talking about success now in any way, that I don't think you can. I think that's a really good part of the definition um, that Maxwell or who's that? Yeah, it was, um, let's say one thing. John C. Maxwell, he's an old American guy, but he's got some, he's, he's been straight facts, he's got some good points. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so the, you, need to, you need to have a purpose, you need to have an end goal so you can measure your success. Are you closer to that own end goal? Because if you're just drifting around, you can never know if you're successful in drifting around. Right? Yeah, that's <laughs> you are true. drifting around. But um, I, well, uh, the third part of the definition is interesting because I feel like it's a bit of a motivational definition, you know, be good, um, do no harm. <laughs> Uh, I don't. I don't think it has to do a lot with success, but I would definitely say that it's hard to achieve success if you don't help others achieve theirs, right? Because nobody will help you. But yeah, interesting enough. Um, then I, we'll get back to it. But like, um, so I was I was just searching at like what other celebrities and other famous people thought about like their definition of success and that third part of like helping others, making others feel great. That came back almost every single time. But would you say would you say that's important? Do you consider helping others when it comes to your own success? Does that give you a sense of maybe fulfillment or does it make you feel happy helping others and you can be totally honest you say like no I, I don't really care about this that's fine too but like would you say that's a, a vital part of success I think that is that is closely connected to the uh, external uh, mm -hmm. validation or admiration part as well so it's it's of, of course we, we do not only want our uh, people to be proud of us we want other people to be you know happy within themselves right so I think yes helping people out really really contributes contributes to success and i think it, it also comes comes back to the point where well let's say if you're in a very hostile environment and you're the only one being success, successful over there you're, you're not going to be able to 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 be successful for long because people will feel resentful towards you because you're not helping them out you're only uh, accumulating let's say wealth for yourself so that that's that's not a possible a good scenario to be in whereas if you let's say are successful at something and you help the whole community to also become successful and enjoy the fruits of your success i think that that is much more healthy for yourself and the community as well so. of course because i guess t kind of tying into what you said about like society and like i guess you're trying to work on like how can i help the society or contribute to it as well and and again I don't want to mix it up too too much but when it comes to the benefit of others Denzel Washington one of my most favorite actors he actually has a quote on like what he thinks about his success and he says it's it's about who we've lifted up he says that sometimes success isn't about the accomplishments or the recognitions but it's about how we can apply them to benefit others you know in that sense so would you agree with that sentiment or would you just say that's a bunch of like wavy like it's just a political correct answer in that sense mm. Yes and no. It, it is a politically correct answer, definitely. <laughs> but I would agree completely. I um, I think it's a very nice definition of success because we I think we very established that it's quite subjective, right? Mm. And I really like this subjective definition of success. Yeah. Like, but yeah, it's since it is so su subjective, so personal. I think the most important thing would you say is that you have to come to your own realization. You have to constantly make your own choice. That okay, for me, this is what I think success is. Right, it has to almost make it your own, and I guess that ties into your into your in your purpose as well. I guess I didn't, didn't I didn't ask you as well. Like, do you have a sense that you know what your purpose is on this earth? Today? Well, I don't. I to be honest, I do not have a clear uh, purpose. Let's say, of course, I have some passions. I like doing certain things. I I I am surrounded by really good friends and family. You so play guitar. Yeah. I, I play yeah I play guitar, which is one of my passions, of course. Okay. But I, I I don't say that I know the ultimate goal in my life. Like I just know that I like to do certain things. I like to help certain people, and yeah, that that pretty pretty much sums it up. Of course, I I'll try to shoot in the dark over here. Since we're studying law, I believe we somehow have a sense of justice. Like perhaps by choosing this. In, in unconscious level, we, we wanted to, let's say, contribute to the clarification of justice in, in, in this world, and like jurisprudence in general. So I probably think that it could be something similar to that, but I'm, I don't think I will be or anyone will be able to uh, realize this later, at least later in life, you know. Okay. So, so you both expressed that you don't... Have you, have you, like... Uh, understood or like found out what your purpose is like Oof. well yeah don't want to get too i guess religious because i was really raised a christian myself so when it comes to purpose it's automatically tied with you know the big man upstairs so in a sense your purpose is whatever in, in it's, it's almost like what god on not say imposes with you but in, in a sense it's almost like a, a journey you together with god decide okay what is my purpose how can i and, and they use the term glorify his kingdom how can i make sure that his his word and his idea is being um, communicated well in his life and I guess but that's something similar to you guys I've struggled with all my life because in a sense I don't know what I'm doing here right but in, in a sense 
um, what I think something that's important with everything is that you have to make it your own. You have to make that conscious effort and you have to sit down and maybe even put a notepad or something like that and kind of think like, okay, what do I want to do with my life? A lot of times we, do, we could do that through studying or trying to find what, what, we, what we think is cool or finding our passions or finding something that, that makes us happy. For example, doing this podcast, I felt like this could potentially be a part of my purpose. How cheesy it sounds because, mm. you know, I love talking to people, I love making conversation and I like just expanding different opinions in that sense. But yeah, I think that's for me. But then um, one thing I wanted to ask you guys, do you feel any pressure when it comes to maybe finding that purpose or I guess aiming towards those goals or those desired goals? In that sense do you feel any pressure now mm, right now no but in general yes definitely i i think it's inherent into being a human to feel that pressure to find the, your purpose in life um and especially in modern day societies with this success and the unbelievable amount of motivational videos on <laughs> the social medias about how to become successful without anybody defining what success is and there is a lot of these um, un, un, unseen pressure from everywhere, also from your parents, of course. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and but but I I don't think it's right that there is pressure for that. Why not? Uh, then it makes you be successful for the sake of sake of success, and not for the sake of helping others. For example, now, um, that's a good one. No, actually, I agree. Actually, it's it sounds very cheesy, but I I agree. Thank yeah. you. Uh, so. so there is a good story, right, Mark? <laughs> yes, sir. Um, of this young businessman going to the seaside for finally his one week of holiday, you know, in those 365 days per year. Um, and he comes to holiday and um, takes out his sunbed, starts sunbathing, and sees this old man going to um, the pier and putting in the fishing rod in the water, waiting for the fish, catch one fish, takes the fishing rod out, and goes home. He sees that old man doing the same the next day and the next day. And because, of course, after three days on a holiday of this young, ambitious business person, um, he is already bored and he goes to the old man and asks, you know, why, why don't you stay longer and fish for more fish? And the old man is, yeah, and what, what, what then? Well, then you can sell those fish, right? And, and what then? Well, then you can maybe buy a second fishing rod and you can catch even more fish, right? And the old man is, yeah, what then? Well, then maybe you can catch so many fish that you can buy a boat. And what then? Well, then maybe you can have a crew working on a boat and they catch fish for you. Yeah, and what then? Then I'll be right here fishing that one fish like I do every single day, you know? And it's and that's what I don't want. I don't want to be that young, ambitious person in that story, businessman, whatever. That, that just wants success for the sake of success or wants more for the sake of having more, not knowing what to do with that or how to make society better in that way or his life personally better in that way. Okay, yeah, because yeah, that's, that's really interesting because I all, both of you guys ask you about like ambition because I think in certain ways you guys are quite ambitious people and uh, Sonny Dave, like knowing, I guess, they'll know what, what you're doing. Like you're, you're, you're probably one of the most hard-working person I know, like, right? Yeah, I agree. For, to add a little context, Dave and I were, like, roommates, and every Tuesday we'd have Tuesday's dinners, and this guy, I'll ask this guy, like, for 12 straight <laughs> weeks, like, hey, man, hey, we're having dinner, we're having some drinks, you want to join? Yeah, man, I have to go to Amsterdam, wake up at 6 a.m. to do my internship. <laughs> this, he's doing two internships. You only have to do one, he's doing two internships, which is fine, right? But in that sense... So like how would you, how do you weigh out your your I guess your personal life when it comes to like just having fun and with those ambitions because I, I feel like I don't want to put any words in your mouth like why are you putting so much time in working at a law firm doing that internship and putting that extra work in is it to be successful to achieve these goals yeah I mean at this point I I really do not know what I'm exactly <laughs> doing <laughs> that, that's that's the problem because it's just uh, just trial and error like I'm trying to experience everything I'm trying to experience how it is to be filled with work at the point that you don't have time to see your friends and at the same time in the past I've experienced the opposite like being so free that you know you don't find purpose to do anything you know so it, I, I think it's all about phases in your life and like you know, trying to find that balance. Okay, this is very cliche because everyone talks about this balance and say, oh, you should do this and you should do that. But in fact, nobody knows how to exactly, like there's no formula 
on how you achieve this balance. I think you just have to try out things and like see how it works for yourself. Maybe maybe you should pay attention to your body sometimes, you know, because you can be like working hard and yeah, I can do this. Like you have good results, but that is gonna manifest somehow in another way so okay you might be like going strong and well you're receiving good salaries you're able to buy what you want to buy but at the same time you might find other problems you know in socializing which of course will have detrimental effects if you're not able to you know coordinate it efficiently so i i don't know i don't have an exact answer for you i just know that the more you try and the more you pay attention to yourself i think the better it will become in terms of like finding that balance Exactly. So just yeah, trial and error. I guess they have um, as a saying. I think it's I think it's like in Dutch, it's like "niet geschoten is altijd mis," and it's like if you never shoot, you you always, always miss, miss, right? In that sense. And I guess yeah, but I think um, yeah, a, ambition could be a good thing in, in a sense because it, it could sometimes you have to figure out, you have to do stuff you don't want to do to find out what you want to do, right? In that sense. And but I think uh, asking the same question to you, Max, I would say you're quite an ambitious person. You've decided to do two bachelors at the same time for some. For some reason, but like, what was your what was your decision to do that? Like, why would you, did you think like, ah, I want to expand out and expand? Why did you think, okay, let's do both? Um, why did I think that let's do both? Yeah, what were I, you I, thinking? I, what, what was I? Thinking? <laughs> I don't know. There is exams coming up, and I don't know what I was thinking. There? But um, no, so I, I I am lucky enough to not have the necessity to work during my studies um, and why not take that privileged opportunity and do two studies because a lot of most of my friends work during their studies right um, and I have enough time I guess for another full-time commitment and I chose to get more educated into another field that I'm really interested in um, and for example before when you were talking about how do you balance out your ambitions and your desire for happiness, for current happiness, you know, for hanging out with friends, watching a movie, whatever. Um, it's, I, I personally see it a lot as sometimes a sacrifice uh, for a better future, essentially. So um, instead of, I don't know, drinking Hennessy and doing lines of cocaine every day, you know, <laughs> you, go to, you go to a classroom and you watch a lecture and maybe you're not getting instant dopamine release right then and there, but you know that in the future that will be helpful and maybe you'll get a lot more dopamine from that lecture in the future you know because you'll be because you'll gain knowledge that you'll be able to use in a job interview you'll get a good job you'll be good at your job because you have that knowledge and maybe there is more happiness in that um, so i think a lot of it is realizing this the sacrifice that you're making and the importance of the sacrifice okay so you, i guess you're, it's more like you're almost working towards the potential of Fulfillment, right? Having a, like a fulfilling career of having a sense of being content with what you're doing, right? In, in, in a sense, if I'm paraphrasing, if I understand what you're saying correctly. Yes, but again, fulfilling c career, what is that? Yeah, it's I guess. So, it's so abstract, so ambiguous. I don't... But it's just, I'm really lost with that. that. That's my purpose right now, trying to figure out how to define those things and successful career, you know. But that's fine, I guess. And, and as you as you as you mentioned, it's, it's a journey. I'm pretty sure how, what you thought was successful or fulfilling two years ago has probably changed a lot in in this past couple of ways. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. And and um, we we talked about it in short because I, I I was actually quite excited to talk to about this part because we have something that is quite rare because you're a person that uses social media, right? In a sense. Yes. And you're a person that does not use social media, right? I, yeah. I don't want to put I you on the No, know. you don't. You, has, you have no Instagram, which is, I think, because I almost, everyone I know has, like, um, like um, social media in that sense. I also have it on there. I like to make dance videos online. You can follow me on uh, M.A.M. Savage for some dance videos. But anyway, it's something I wanted to talk about. Do you think that um, social media, have, we have so many, like, as you said, people that set up what a successful life is you have to six-figure salary, you have to be have, like, a holiday home, and... The amount of motivation the quote you have of like it's usually like a picture of like Tom Hardy and like some quote or like being a near louder the cap is like work uh real person uh, never sleeps and works hard that's what a real life is but I think that's also like but a kind of dominant sense but would you say I'm not gonna ask I'm gonna would you say that um not having social media for you Max as is beneficial in this case for your life because you don't really have to worry about these perceptions and these 
these weird opinions of other people online. Y yes, definitely. Exactly what David said before. You don't have to worry about those, uh, the about the external part of success. So uh, everybody needs to worry about how to become successful, how to achieve success. But at least when you cut down on social media, you cut down on the externalities of it. Um, it becomes more of a personal thing that you need to figure out. And it's no longer... Um, based on other people's opinions and not even other people's opinions but other accounts opinions because i don't equate a person's instagram account to that person but um uh, so i i think that those are two different personalities that are being run one on instagram and one personality in real life and i think it's very troublesome that for example that a person who is um, who spends a lot of time on instagram um can feel successful even though it's not a real success uh, can um, make himself or herself look successful in the eyes of the others through the Instagram platform but is unable to inherit that success into their their own lives you know um, but yeah that's my take on social media I, I, I think I feel much better after after having deleted it yeah okay yeah that makes sense and do you have a turn yeah. on oh well I, I, I pretty much agree with everything that was said before but Max and by you I think yeah social media has had a huge impact on people's perception of success like right if you if you manage to post a picture of yourself standing by a Lamborghini or whatever or like opening expensive bottles then you suddenly become successful you get the likes and you get the satisfaction by each like that you get but I pretty much agree with Max in the other point that well, that's that's not real success because I, I know pr plenty of people who just live for that, live for that specific picture, and outside in reality they don't really have that much fun. So it's that that I think I deem that pointless. But I also think that if you know how to use social media in a way that doesn't affect your perception of success, and I'm sure I'm sure that that can be done. I I, I tried. That's that's how I tried to do it with myself. Like. The purpose of me having social media is just to see what my friends are up to you know what 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 people are up nowadays what's the trend nowadays i don't see that oh this guy posted a quote about tom hardy oh then he should he, he knows how to be successful maybe i should do, i that that i don't i don't think that's 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 the right way to go about social media and i think it's not social media's fault in itself like as an invention i think it's just people who yeah, we, have used it in a way that mm -hmm. has completely gone out of control you know like instagram wasn't meant to you know show off instagram was just meant to share some beautiful memories of yourself you know like hey i'm going over here let everyone see that or oh this guy's going over there you know so yeah if if you're able to stick to the true purpose of let's say instagram specifically then i think that you can live a very peaceful life without having to worry about other people's standards of success exactly because i think yeah it's, it's, it's almost impossible not to compare even though we try to convince ourselves that we don't care about the perception of others we do care even like even myself like i found myself posting a picture and be like oh no it has to get above 100 likes. Like, why? Why does it need to get above 100 likes? Why do I care about? I, don't, I shouldn't care about all that stuff because I think then, for some reason, you make like a, almost an unhealthy, I guess, comparison that you feel like, okay, these people pressing double twice on my photo, now that gives me a sense of fulfillment. That gives me a sense of like self-worth. That's, that's in, my, that in my opinion, that should never be the case, right? You should, should be able to post it. Because that's, the, yeah, as, as you mentioned before, like the reason I like social media because it's a great way to express themselves. And, I say this all the time, like, I want to I want to use Instagram like my mom. And the reason why I say that, because my mom doesn't care about, you know, <laughs> how she looks, the filters, the angles, putting the leg up, the duck face. Like, she'll, she'll be, like, making a, a, a selfie walking down the canals, like, you know, terrible angle, not caring, just, hey, these are some pretty flowers. And, you know, and I, I want to have that innocence, because I think if you have that perception, you'll be way happy and you'll, you'll care way less about what other people think of you, in that mm -hmm. sense. But, yeah. And uh, yeah, so and another question I wanted to like uh, talk to you about, and I guess ties somewhat in with like um, with like um, success as well. Like, how important would you guys say is like the, the mental aspect? Like, I guess having a good sense of mental health, being strong, being I guess secure in who you, who you are when it comes to maybe success or just being you know a human being. Like, how important is it to make sure that you're I guess good up here in your your guys's opinion? very um uh, above all important um because also when you have like classified um mental diseases whatever 
such as depression, um, you lack the feeling of success. You can be a successful person in everybody else's eyes, but you will never feel successful. And I think it's very important to maintain a good mental health in order to be actually able to experience your achievements in life, right? So I would say absolutely yes. Okay. And did you guys maybe know maybe examples of other like stuff you guys do to ensure like your mental health? Maybe I don't know exercises or because some people like oh like is there anything you guys you can put to put yourself make yourself successful in that sense? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm sure I'm sure there are pretty pretty like many people who actually like are more expert like has have more expertise in these like I mean. I see people out there like recommending certain diets or like uh, they they teach you how how to uh, conduct yourself in a gym you know how much reps should you do and everything so yeah I think that that is an important aspect like of course healthy mind healthy body and everything and I would say yes it is a it is part of success like you being healthy but it's not gonna make you successful like it's not a precondition to success. It's just, you know, part of it. So the fact that you're healthy, if you eat healthy, doesn't mean that you will become successful. However, in order to be successful, you need to be healthy. So that's, that's I think that's the synergy between the, exactly. between the two concepts. Because that makes, I guess from, from my perspective, and again, again, I don't, I'm not saying, as you said, there are way more people that know more and more about it, but something that has helped me personally, when it's only when it comes to the mental aspect, is that, and um, just you constantly, test your situation and you, you you ask critical questions do i like where i am do i like the people surrounding me do am i feeling like i'm going moving forward you you're you're very critical in, in almost every aspect of yourself and, and sometimes you can maybe make yourself crazy but if you kind of know what's going up in here in in a sense i believe everything else will fall in place right if, if you're if you if kind of not if you're good between your mind you know those doors will open. People will kind of like gravitate because kind of people can sense. People are quite subconsciously quite smart. They kind of like know like okay, this guy has his life f- figured out. This guy kind of knows what it is. And I think based on that, a lot of opportunities that can potentially turn into like successful opportunities will kind of like follow in that sense. But yeah, and uh, yeah, one more final question. We talked about it in in, in before. Um, <clears throat> we talked a little bit about pre- oppression and all that stuff, and of course, obviously about when it comes to like parents and all that stuff. Um, this, and this could be a personal question. You can answer if you want to. Like, do you feel any, I guess, um, pressure from your parents or family units or other members when it comes to like being successful? Because in a way, you know, so how that's uh, how my my father pointed it. You know, in, in a sense, we're like his. Um, I've, you know, in the certainly Nigerian culture, well, I'm almost his inheritance in a sense. You know, they like to show you off. You know, it's like ah, oh, this is my this is my son Mark. He's studying law. It's like oh, la, la, la. and then you have these uncles and people on Facebook saying stuff like oh, why are you studying law? If any legal advice will come to you, it's like <laughs> <laughs> you can't afford me. <laughs> and there is stuff like that. But yeah, uh, when it comes to uh, success and stuff, do you guys maybe feel pressure from your parents or like or other parental units? Yes, um, unspoken pressure, low pressure all the time. Just by the fact that they are parents and uh, that up until recently, you know, you saw them as almighty almost, um, brings a lot of pressure to trying to achieve at least what they did in life, if not more. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, on my side, I, I don't really like feel any pressure, which to be honest sometimes I think it's it's wrong <laughs> but that's because when I was younger like my mom at least was always like oh Dave you should get good grades I mean you have everything like nothing nothing is missing you know like you have food you have shelter you have education like why shouldn't you get those good grades but somehow like by feeling that pressure I would kind of get stuck like I it, it really wouldn't help me so I had conversations with my parents and I pretty much made it clear to them that hey this is this is definitely not working so after a while, my dad properly realized this and they said, okay, just do your thing. Like, don't, you shouldn't care about the grades. You shouldn't care about how successful you are. As long as you're healthy, as long as you're happy, as long as you have good friends that surround you, then that's, 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 uh, that's the definition of success. So yeah, I don't feel any certain pressure. I could feel pressure because of what my parents have achieved. So I see my dad, he's, he's a very successful lawyer, and I say, okay, now I got to step up the game. Like, I, I have to become better than him. But that's indirect uh, pressure. It's not, it's not him 
telling me to become a good lawyer or better than him. It's just it's just a personal struggle. But in that sense, yeah, I guess we all are subject to pressure in some form. Yeah, exactly. And I think, yeah, the, the, the term you coined, like unspoken pressure, I think that's also what I kind of feel. Like I've been also very fortunate and privileged enough that I could just live my life, I can just exist. And I think that really helped with, with me just discovering my individuality and just like enjoying one of the joy. I had never really had pressure for my parents. Sometimes I feel like I wish they gave me a little more pressure because, you know, I would have loved to just maybe done more things. But then again, I don't want to blame them for not putting pressure on me. That's the most <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why didn't you pressure me more in doing <laughs> hard work? No, all that stuff. But but yeah, and I think, uh, yeah, certainly so kind of knowing where I come from, seeing where my mum came from, in a sense, yeah, I don't want to like go all too sad. But, you know, she, she, she grew up in like running like a village and she worked t- so like entirely hard to put me to put me in the position I am now. You know, where I don't have to worry about anything, and I'm I'm really uh, lucky and eternally grateful for that. But yeah, sometimes I do feel like you know, yeah, you, I do want to. You know, you want we all want to have that moment in that sense. We all want to have like that Oscar moment for me at least. That you know, you're up on that stage and you've done that thing. You say your speech like oh, I want to thank you know my mom and everyone and all that stuff that put you in in, in, in that in that position. But I guess. You know, I feel like now we're all so young and I guess this is the perfect time to find out what we want to do with our life mm-hmm. and what our purpose is. But yeah. Okay. But that was a pretty good... Um, yeah, I think... Yeah. I don't... Do, you I, don't know if I'll do the sign-off? I'm not sure how to sign off. I think I, I asked for everything I want to Savage say. Out. <laughs> no, Savage out. Savage <laughs> But yeah, yeah, do you guys have any, any crazy remarks, anything you want to add or, or, or want to say? Let's can, the I, floor show. can I say a short anecdote? Or you know what? Out? Knock yourself out, Dave. Yes. So... Uh, you guys should probably be familiar with Alexander the Great, right? Oh yeah, the the conqueror. Yes. Yeah, he was like, he was he's considered to be history's one of like one of history's greatest uh, and most successful military commanders, right? Mm-hmm. Like he managed to overthrow the Persian Empire. He came to throne when he was like twenty, and he managed to build an empire that stretched from Greece to India. So that's like pretty big, right? However, he died at the age of thirty-three. Yeah. So. And he was also not able to leave a descendant or anything. So basically, he enjoyed nothing from all that uh, empire that he built himself. On the other side, I, I was of course I've been reading a bit of his biography. There's a section which talks about a, him meeting one of the famous uh, philosophers back in the days. It was Diogenes. Now Diogenes, he was a uh, he was a very cynical uh, philosopher. Basically, his all possessions in life included just one single cup where he could just drink from ponds and a wooden barrel. Like he would literally live in a wooden barrel. Like he, like all the philosophers back in the days were very like privileged because they had high status in society. They had good houses, but not Diogenes. He just decided to live in a wooden barrel all of his time and just spend his life over there. However, he was very smart. So when Alexander the Great was going to, he passed, passing by his city, he was like, okay, I really want to meet this guy. And having mine, Alexander the Great was tutored by Aristotle, right? So he knew his stuff about philosophy. He goes to meet Diogenes and he sees, he's so, like, he has so much admiration for him. He's like, Diogenes, like, I know you're such a smart guy. Like, you're so, you're so uh, uh, fantastic and stuff. Like, ask anything and I will give it to you. Is it money, power, whatever? And literally, Diogenes was just like, yes, could you please step aside because you're blocking the sun for me. That was his answer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and Alexander the Great was like, oh my God, damn. If I wasn't Alexander the Great, I wish I was Diogenes. And Diogenes replied, well, if I wasn't Diogenes, I still wish I was Diogenes. So I, I think this is the perfect example of that internal a feeling of success you know if you think yourself that you've made it if you think that you are unique in your own way and you stand out in your own way from people then i think you've pretty much achieved success exactly so it's it's about personal perception in a sense and i guess you shouldn't focus on what you said about the more external part but like you know if you believe you're happy believe life is good then life is good it's a great way of tying it in i think i'm gonna end the podcast i want to thank you guys Thank you guys Thank you. for watching. Thank you very much. My, uh, my name was uh, Mark Savage. Just joined with Max Marlton and David Mustafa. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you like and subscribe. And uh, hey, we'll see you soon. Savage out.